Hey everybody, welcome back to the Financial Freedom Show. My name is Rob Berger. In this episode, I'm gonna walk through uh, five retirement planners that I think are terrific, uh, that can help you really in any stage, whether you're just beginning you know, your working years and you've got decades to go, or if you're like me and maybe a little closer to retirement and you wanna do some planning and understand you know, how much do you need to retire, how much can you spend in retirement, and a host of other questions. I think these five tools, some are free, some are paid, uh, can be a, a big, big help. So that's what we're gonna do today. And below the video, I have a link to an article that I've written on the same topic that gives even more details about each of, of, of these tools. The first three I would call retirement planners, very detailed um, planners that can really help you dial in what you need to retire and even to help you as you retire and then through retirement. And then the last two I would call more like calculators and they are sort of quick and easy to use and can help you estimate how much you need to retire and you know if your retirement's going to last. So with that, let's get right to it. And the very first one on, on the list is a tool we've talked about many times and it's personal capital. This is a demo uh, of, the, of the tool and I've sort of made up three portfolios. They happen to total about $3 million, but obviously you can link your own accounts. You can do it where you, you, know, you give your username and password. You don't give it to personal capital. They use bank level encryption and security. Uh, personal capital doesn't ever see your credentials, but that's okay if you're not comfortable with that. You can actually enter your accounts manually uh, as well. And that's actually true for all of the tools that we're gonna look at today. But once you've got your accounts connected, however you choose to do that, we go to the planning tab right here and the retirement planner. And I've kind of already started a little bit. Uh, this sort of shows you, in this case, I've put in that I'm gonna retire at the age of 61. This is sort of a, a made up person. And, um, and I'm, I'm setting it to, to the age of 95. You can change all of that down here in um, assumptions in terms of inflation and life expectancy and tax rate. And then you can also change your birth date. I've just put in 1960. And of course, your filing status, if you're married or not, if you are, you can add information about your spouse. Um, and the nice thing about this tool is it takes all of your accounts that you link, and here are the, the three that we've sort of made up for this demo, and uses all of that information along with additional income and spending events that you include um, and generates the likelihood uh, that you will uh, have enough money in retirement. Now, you'll notice that our likelihood of success here, 29%, that's not too good. And the reason is, is I intentionally set the annual spending here in retirement to something that $3 million just couldn't support. You know, as a, as a ballpark number, you can spend roughly 4% of your portfolio in the first year of retirement. And there are ways to do a little better than that. Uh, but we'll use that assumption. So on 3 million, that would be roughly 10,000 a year or 120 or 10,000 a month, 120,000 a year. Notice one of the things personal capital allows you to do is actually set an, an amount that you're spending will decrease during retirement. That may seem a little odd, uh, but studies have found that as we age, particularly as we get into our 70s, 80s, and certainly 90s, we, we actually do spend less than we did in the early years of retirement. But as you probably saw very quickly, it ran about 5,000 scenarios. And because we've changed our spending, it's bumped up our chances of success to 73%. Now, we could do other things, right? We could reduce our spending and see how that affects um, uh, our, our plan. Uh, perhaps the Social Security that we've set here isn't accurate. You can actually sync it with the Social Security estimate. Now, that estimate is in part based on the income you put into personal capital. Probably the best way is to just go to the Social Security Administration online and uh, find out what your benefit is going to be at full retirement age. But we can sync it here and save that. And of course, they're going to run through 5,000 simulations and you can see you know, we've bumped up our chance of success uh, another few percentage points. Here's the nice thing about personal capital. It's very easy to add income events. Maybe you're gonna have an annuity or you expect some inheritance, or maybe you've got a rental property, or maybe you're gonna work part-time while you're in retirement, or you're gonna downsize. All of these things can be easily modeled in literally a matter of seconds. And you can also add spending goals. Maybe you're gonna take a, a, a vacation you know, when you retire, or you wanna give some money to charity or whatever it is you wanna do. It's very easy in personal capital to model those things, whether they're an income or a spending event, 
And the other thing I'll mention before we move on is you can create multiple scenarios. Um, you can see here, add a new scenario. So for example, I could have one that has me working a, to say two extra years in retirement or spending a little less or a little more. And then you can compare uh, those scenarios. So personal capital, definitely one of the three that I would call planners and it's the free one. So for me, to me, everyone should be frankly using this. I use the others I'm going to show you as well. And that can make some sense to use more than one. But since this one's free and a pretty robust tool, uh, it's one that I really, uh, really like. And the graphs are pretty cool. All right. Number two, this is New Retirement. This is another demo account that I've set up. This one I think has got about a million bucks in it. And uh, I really like New Retirement. I, I know the founder, um, Stephen Chen. I know several of the folks that work there. They're, I can tell you they're investing a lot of time and money into building out this tool. Once you get it set up, and they can walk you through a very easy setup uh, if you, you know, once you sign up, um, you, you get this dashboard. And it shows you, not unlike personal capital, the chance of, of your retirement money lasting through retirement, and what they call an income score. You can see there how they define that. But in the short time we have today, what I want to show you is just how detailed this tool is. You can see the tab up here for my plan. If we click that, uh, we can actually begin to walk through each one of these areas and it'll collect information. So for example, the first one are your accounts and I've just made up two accounts for this demo, but you can add all kinds of accounts as you can see, you know, uh, traditional IRA, current 40K or former 40K, Roth, HSAs, 529s. And just like personal capital, you can link your accounts or you can enter them uh, uh, manually. And you continue to walk through each of these plan stages. So that was all of your accounts, all this information on your primary residence. Do you plan to change? Maybe you're gonna downsize or you own some uh, rental uh, uh, real estate or you plan to purchase real estate in the future. And as you add these things, uh, sort of the summary of your plan changes uh, over in the right-hand panel. And we can go through and you can just for, for this video, I just want to give you a sense as to how robust this tool is. You've got a place for all of your debts. Of course, you have income, which includes work and Social Security, but you may have some passive income, pensions, annuities. Maybe you expect a windfall. Uh, you can walk through your, your expenses, including healthcare expenses, and you can get as granular on this as you want to, uh, or you can just do it like I've done here with just a $4,000 a month expense uh, assumption. You can have your expenses be one thing during your working years and something else in retirement. I mean, it really is an incredibly robust tool. And then, of course, your money flows, whether you have re reoccurring contributions to accounts, any excess income. You can look at the different with with withdrawal strategies, either based on spending needs, a fixed percentage during retirement, or you can even set it to maximum spending to just see what's the most my money could actually give me. And we can walk through, there are others, there's estate planning tabs, um, profile and goals, uh, which are important. A lot of assumptions that you can set yourself in this tool. And um, once you've got that, you've got your dashboard. Other thing I really like about this tool is you have all of these insights where they'll go through each of these different sections and give you analysis. Uh, you, they'll give you a savings timeline, for example, and when your money will run out, if at all, right? Um, another thing I like about this is they do have in beta a Monte Carlo analysis that shows you, you know, the, the green line is your best case, the red line is your worst case, uh, and the blues are kind of like the uh, 25, the dark blues, like 25 to 75% likelihood. So you can run Monte Carlo analysis with different assumptions that you choose. And a new uh, tool that they've just come out with, the Roth Conversion Explorer, you can actually run this and it'll give you some ideas as to when you should do Roth conversions um, and by how much. Now, one thing I'll say there is take the tool is with a grain of salt. The tool is great, um, but it, one, it's only as good as the data you put in to the tool. So you got to make sure you've got very accurate data. And you have to keep in mind a lot of the decisions on Roth conversions depend on some things that we just can't know, like future tax brackets and rates, which we can guess. Are they going to go up? Are they going to go down? And of course, your situation could change. Your income could unexpectedly go up or go down. But still, I really like this Roth conversion tool as sort of a starting point to figuring out what uh, conversions might make sense for you. So a very, very robust tool.
All right, moving on. On tra uh, trajectory is uh, very similar, I think, to new retirement, but it goes about things in a slightly different way. And of course, the user interface is very different. Like new retirement, it has a, a means to get you up and running very quickly. And then once you kind of have a baseline in the tool, you can begin to model all of your income, as you see here, all of your expenses, and all of your accounts. And for each of these tabs, you'll be able to select down here to add uh, almost anything you could think of. In terms of income, you can see you've got regular income, bonuses, a fixed annuity, any insurance, pensions. You can model Social Security, of course, your spouse's income, trust income, rental income, pretty much just about everything. And the same would be with expenses. You can look at the different expenses ranging from college for your kids to daycare, vacations, vehicles. One of the things I'll mention here is that and we'll use college as an example. If we were going to add college payments right here, it's this row right here. Let me reduce that. You can see that I, for each of these expenses, and this is true with incomes as well, you have a start age and an end age. And that can be very helpful because maybe you pay for college, but it's only going to be for a four year period of time. And so maybe for, say, from the age of 55 to 60, you're going to spend, I'll just throw in a number. Boy, college is kind of expensive, but I'll just put in $25,000 uh, a year. And you could model that. And, and you could do this with, with anything. Um, but that's just an example. I'll go ahead and delete that for now. And then um, your accounts. And again, um, I've got some sample accounts in here that total, as you can see, $2 million. Just like the other tools we've looked at, you can link your accounts if you want, or you can enter them manually. And then once you have all of that data uh, in the tool, it shows you, just like the name suggests, your tra trajectory uh, over time. And it gives you the chance uh, you know, that you won't run out of money. We can actually update it. And you can see with the, the assumptions that we have, it says we have a 98% chance um, uh, of success one of the things I like about this tool is in calculating that, it, it looks at both Monte Carlo analysis and historical data. It combines both. And there's a ton of information in this tool. If we click this eye icon right here, you'll get just a sense. I mean, so this is the data they have just on how they calculate that success number. And so you can really take a deep dive into this tool. Uh, it's very, very powerful. I use all three of the ones I just showed you. I think for most people, Personal capital is kind of because it's free and such an easy tool to use. I like that one. And then I like new retirement and on trajectory. I think they're both worth using, but just keep in mind the, the, these other tools uh, both have costs associated with them. They're really reasonable. Again, you can get cost information um, in the link below uh, the video. So I want to keep this short. So I want to keep moving on. I'll do uh, more detailed reviews and demos of each of these tools in future videos. So the next two are what I call more like calculators. The first one, it's actually networthify.com. It was sort of built out as, in a way as an early retirement calculator, but it's super simple to use. You put in here your income. Let's say you make 75,000 a year. Um, how much are you saving? Let's just get crazy and say you're able to save 25,000 of that. Um, that means you're spending the rest, which is 50,000, which is right here. That may be a little hard to see, but um, it calculates your savings rate, which is about a third, of course. And you can put here your current uh, savings. What have you invested? Let's just, I don't know, we'll say you've, you've got 100,000. And then you crunch the numbers. And it's pretty simple. It tells you that based on these assumptions, you should be able to retire in about 21 and a half years. And it gives you a breakdown of how it calculated all of that. One thing I'll mention is there's a link right here for show more options. And if you click it, you get two additional options. You can set the annual return on investments. It's set at 5%, which is, you could think of that as sort of an after inflation uh, rate of return, but you can set that to something else if you prefer. And the withdrawal rate, how much can you withdraw in the first year of retirement? It's set to 4%. I personally wouldn't raise that for planning purposes. By the way, if we, were, if we got crazy, and let's just put that at 8%, just to show you that the years to retirement would go way down. Yeah, it goes down to 12. It's unfortunately, 8% is just not realistic. I probably wouldn't keep it, move it above four. If you're going to retire early, say in your 40s or 50s, I'd probably be closer to three uh, on the withdrawal rate. Uh, but again, very simple tool to use. Uh, it can be a lot of fun to play with, and it's totally free. The fifth and final retirement calculator that I like is C Fire Sim. And again, I'll have links to all of this below the video. It's a little more involved. 
uh, but not too bad. You've got you know, when you're going to retire and your data method. We're going to use historical data to do the calculations, but there are other approaches. Uh, your portfolio value, I just put in a million bucks and uh, $40,000 initial spend. I'm going to adjust it for inflation using CPI. You can change all of that here. One of the things I like about this tool is you can actually put in your, your percentage of stocks and bonds and your expense ratio, and it's going to use that data for its historical analysis. You can put Social Security in down here and a few other adjustments, but uh, pretty basic, uh, it's pretty simple uh, to populate this. And then you run your simulation. And what it does, it goes all the way back, I think to 1871, yeah, and says, all right, um, you know, is given the numbers you've put in and all the assumptions, is your money going to last or not? And um, right now we're, we're looking pretty good. There are a few retirement years that we, where we would have run out of money. You can see it right here. It tells us that we succeeded 95.87% of the time. We failed five of 121 total cycles. Again, that's going back to 1871. The cycles we failed would have been in the 60s, yeah, 66 and maybe early 70s possibly. Uh, those were tough years to retire. And it gives you a breakdown of some of the data here. So uh, very simple to use and some pretty interesting and I think helpful uh, information. So there you go, five great retirement tools. The first three are planners, uh, very detailed. You can get really detailed into how you model your retirement. I'm kind of at that age, I'm using those tools a lot. And the last two free are retirement. I would call them more like calculators, uh, kind of get just a very quick high level view of one, when you can retire with Networthify and will your money last uh, with C Fire Sim. Again, I'll have links to all of those below the video as well as an article that gives you more detail uh, on all of these tools. And as I said, I am gonna be doing some more detailed demos, particularly on the planners that actually walk through in detail how to use these to model your retirement whether you're decades away from retirement or like me kind of knocking at the door, or maybe you're already in retirement. I think those planners can be a big, big help. Hey, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'd be happy to help you out any way I can. And until next time, remember the best thing money can buy is financial freedom.